Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I'm Braden. That's Tim. Second Legacy is the place. And thank you for stopping by because I'm going to be honest, this is a massively important video that we're about to cover because Tim gets to say the word communist as much as he wants. We are about to dive into something that the gun control group March for Our Live co-founder just did. He just tied gun control and gun safety with outright Marxism, social wealth redistribution all together as one. Guys, the mask is slipping. This is going to be a big one. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. With that, Tim, commies. Yes, commies. Yeah, this is what I love. It's like when I, when I point out the, the, the outright overt Marxism of the Democrat Party. Uh, yeah. Many times people on social media will say, well, you don't even know what Marxism is. You, you, just, you just spew the word. Like, no. Felicia, I know exactly what communism is. <laughs> I grew up in the Cold War era, and I know exactly mm -hmm. what communism is. I have many people, mm -hmm. friends of mine over the years, that have escaped Marxism from Poland and Russia and Ukraine, and they all tell the same stories. And that is breadline, starvation, violence, a police state, and just mm -hmm. general chaos. And uh, yeah, so it's not... Look, I've said for years that the gun grabbers are also Marxists. And I think we finally no. have evidence of this that because they outed themselves in this article. Well, now, now this is, I'm going to introduce the article, but this is an important thing to understand, guys. You need to watch this whole video because we're going to tie this together. But you have to understand they're losing all the return on investment because they are not getting that from shock value. So they're upping the shock value and they're looking for more demographic groups to support. Okay. We're going to come right back to that, Tim. But here's the article they put out this weekend on Rolling Stone. Stopping gun violence means building a social <laughs> safety net and community. Okay. This is written by the co-founder of March for Our Lives, which is Davy Hogg's group. This weekend, understand this is not small fried potatoes. Okay. Let me get you, uh, and I've got the image in there. You can throw it up while I'm doing the intro, doctor. But listen to this, Tim. Tell me if this uh, bodes well for what they're talking about. This is number nine. Enough is enough. We cannot end gun violence while continuing to support a system that ignores social inequality and leaves our kids hungry. We cannot have one without the other. Ooh. So you got to give up guns so we can have social equality, folks. We got hungry children. It's always know? about the children. You know, look, if you survive the gauntlet of abortion that they want to kill everybody, especially minority babies. All about children. Uh, yeah. If they make it into actual life out of the womb, uh, then we're worried about them being hungry. And we need to take the guns away and feed the children. We can do right. as that goofball group mm. in New Mexico is doing. We can pound those firearms into plowshares and feed the starving masses, Ooh. comrade. Oh, nice. Nice, uh, nice tie in. You had a little bit of biblical there. You had a little bit of Russian communism. That was good. Yeah, it's almost I like, like I, that. it's that almost was... like I may know a little bit about Marxism. Uh, only a few <laughs> things, only a couple. Well, you know, Tim, it is about the inequality, though. Yes. The social inequality. That's what it's really about. And you know what's so fascinating, Tim? And a gun control group, which is March for Our Lives, um, they've never really prior to this come out overtly and suggest something beyond gun control. Usually they stay very firmly in their lane, which is where you get a lot of the very irritating, annoying, consistent talking points that are always gun control related that seem to be like rinse and repeat between yeah. these people. Um, but they usually stay right there because they, they try not to venture out too far because they can lose the momentum on their message, but now they have to. So this goes to what I was saying with the return on investment. This goes with the needing larger groups and swaths to come into the gun prevention movement. That's what they're doing here, Tim. They're appealing to the broad-based left by adopting the Marxist language of redistribution of wealth, yep. social inequality, radical, uh, not radical, oh, goodness, reformative justice. I can never remember that quickly. They are trying to redistribute and recreate a socialist system in order to achieve gun control, because if they get rid of inequality, Tim, through all of these social injustices, then gun violence is obviously going to go away because that's the problem, the system. Yeah. You know, Marxism. You didn't know? Marxism cures everything. 
because you die usually Every of time. starvation or a bullet to the back of the head from a government force. And the, the problem solved. Piece of cake. You know, it's, problem solved. Just stand solved in front of the ditch, everything. and in a few seconds, uh, your problems are going to be solved for you by the government. That's exactly so right. It's, That's exactly right. Yeah. You know, it's, and it just, it, it's great to tie in, you know, gun control, gun violence, and Marxism because they're all one big happy threesome. <laughs> I mean, how does that not make a delicious cake? Right? I mean, I mean, honestly. Yeah. It, there's, you know, the yeah. only thing that they left out of this article is cow farts. So, it's like it, that's true. We, we we have we just <laughs> <laughs> we can fix the world's problems by putting corks in cows' butts, taking your guns away, and bringing about social equality through Marxism. Easy. What? It's Easy. a great world, folks. Shut up. It's a fantastic. <laughs> Contribute and die. Just, we d- and, and exactly. Just be a be a cog know. in the machine right. for a greater, equal, <laughs> social justice. The goodness. Not gonna, it's so be so nice. We're not saying everybody's going to be equally rich. They're going to be equally poor, but you're going to be equally but poor without be gun violence. Poor, yes, <laughs> exactly. That's the problem. In fact, if you guys were questioning if they really meant this, let's let's lock this down a little bit further. Really cement this idea here again. Co-founder for March for Our Lives, number ten. This is the youth agenda to end gun violence. This is how we will make long-lasting change and end this epidemic. And this is how, once again, March for Our Lives and young people across the country will demand systemic change to save lives as we enter enter a crucial election year. We won't settle for less and we won't stop until we have a country free of gun violence and economic and racial injustice. They just jumped the entire shark together, dude. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're making all these connections. Like, bef- we, we just did a video talking about childhood cancer and guns, and they left that out of here because we want to, f- you know, a country free of gun violence, childhood cancer, economic and racial injustice. They, they kind of forgot that. that. I guess that was a different person, their, their talking point. But, you know, it's just they're, they're, they're tying all these different things together and trying to come up with, mm-hmm. you know, like, well, see, gun violence really causes economic and racial injustice. So if we just get rid of the guns, you know, and 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 make everybody equally poor. Hey, problem solved. Come on, vote for us. You know? Well, so nobody's they gonna, actually little uh, nobody's going to rob you. If, they actually said that inverse. Nobody, they think they they're saying that economic injustice is causing gun violence. That's what they're saying. Well, I guess that's true. But if you get rid of the guns then then the racial injustice can't cause gun violence. I mean, it, I guess it goes hand well, in hand. You true. can read it one way or the other. It's a cycle. But here I yeah. guess my problem is is like well, it's not really a problem. I guess this is a benefit. If everybody's equally poor and everybody has a dirt floor in their house, you literally have nothing of value. Well, who wants to rob you at that point? You got Boom, nothing I problem want. Solved. Problem Full solved. Circle yep. right there. Tim nailed it. I mean, like, couldn't have said it better. <laughs> who wants to steal dirt floors? I'll tell you what. Some days you're on it and you, you're on it. Yeah. You know, I love that. Hey, give me that. That looks like it's valuable. That's my pot that I piss in. Well, you don't have a pot to piss in now. I mean, that's, I mean, w- 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 I just love these idiots. They're awesome. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Well, you know what I love about them? I love when they come out and completely jump the shark and they just flat out jump right into a realm that is already extreme far left because they were trying to do the whole appeal to the middle to get gun control. But now they're going literally so far to the left. This is woke. This is BLM. This is like, redistribution of wealth. This is far left stuff that they're diving into right now. Yeah. Yep. You know, and, and uh, commies and commies because capitalism, yeah. capitalism is bad to the zoomers. Uh, they, they hate capitalism. They love it to the, the to the point where they have iPhones. On iPhones. Yeah. You know, that $1,500 <laughs> yeah. device in your pocket. They, they like that, but everything else about capitalism oh, sucks. You know, uh, they like yeah. their Teslas oh. and their iPhones and, and, you know, but yeah. Because you're going to get all that stuff out of Marxism. I mean, the Soviet Union developed some of the greatest technology the world's ever seen. Oh, right. Never exactly. mind. Disregard. Um, exactly. No, and yeah. the Germans had the Volkswagen, yeah. <laughs> so what well, could be wrong? The car for folks. It's so great. It's so wholesome. Everyone has one. One model. So great. You got engines in the back. Any color you want, as long as it's black. You know, Henry Ford. Yeah. As long as, as, long as it's black. The Model T approach. Yep. yep. The Soviet well, Union. Tim. All black cars. It's because you got one color. Uh-huh. But, you know, so anyway. Okay. It's, it's really, really effect- effective. No variety because everything's got to be equal. Um, something can't be prettier than the other because that'd be unequal. Um, I just want to walk you through this real quick. This portion I found interesting of this expose here. Some folks, this is number 11, bring up common sense solutions like universal background checks that we know will save lives. 
other folks want to add more fuel to the fire, like Tennessee and Iowa lawmakers who just voted to turn schools into war zones by arming teachers. <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> and sometimes this part is so delicious. Sometimes folks will meet in the middle and vote for armed guards and school hardening, things we know just fuel the school-to-prison pipeline <laughs> and that we know does nothing to reduce violence. Okay. That's so awesome. There's so there's so oh. many catchphrases in there that mean absolutely God. nothing. Uh, you know, it's like... Uh, yeah. Uh, universal background checks. We know save lives. Well, wait a minute. In the 1990s, you told me that background checks you knew saved lives. Yeah, it's weird. But they just weren't enough. We got to go further. They always have to go yeah. further. Just like with the Safe First, Safe First Communities Act. We just passed the most comprehensive gun control in 30 years. We need more. Yeah, right. It's, <laughs> exactly. It's a great baby step. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's just. Well, you know, Tim, school to prison pipeline, though. I mean, like, yes. that's like, wow. Yes. That's impactful. Because, you know, they're, they're because turning schools into war zones, Braden. Yep. Yep. Exactly. That's exactly right. Schools are now war zones mm -hmm. because they gave states, the, their cities, the option to do something where they don't have to. Yeah. That's war zones. But anyway, school to prison pipeline. You know, I, I love this so much, Tim. You know, yeah. And allow me to tell you why I love this so much. Yeah. Because obviously, this is not something that would be based on the individuals who would do the <laughs> crimes or the actions that would lead to prison. This is clearly part of the pipeline that starts in schools and ends in prisons. So if we just didn't have prisons, we wouldn't have criminals. Yeah, well, it's that's so easy. They're working to... that angle too. Yes. Oh, it's coming later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just love that, yeah. you know, that they're going to turn schools into war zones by arming teachers. They disregard the fact that there's 20 states, at least out there, that allow teachers and citizens to carry firearms into schools. Uh, and we haven't seen a war zone yet. Matter of fact, there's no instance I can find mm. through my Google foo, foo of a teacher gunning down a student or a student even stealing a gun from a teacher because they, it's kept confidential as to which teachers are armed. And so, um, Correct. yeah, crazy. Turning our, our schools into war zones. I thought they were war zones. That's why we yeah, needed to ban guns. But then, but then arming teachers turns the schools into war zones. Arming guards doesn't. That's just hardening, but we know it just fuels. We don't like that either because it fuels the school to prison pipeline, kind of like the TSA at airports kind of fuel the airport to prison pipeline and security at football oh, games you, kind of fuels yes. the football game to prison pipeline. You know, it's, it's arresting criminals really fills that pipeline and unjustly puts Does. people underprivileged people in prison because they're underprivileged because they're committing crimes and stealing things and robbing others and shooting people. And so we really have to be sensitive to that. The fact that they're just poor, innocent people and it's the gun hashtag. It's the guns causing the violence and we need socialism to fix it all. Okay, go ahead. And we got, we got to have socialism and redistribution of wealth yes. and we can have no longer have any inequality and uh rar. <laughs> rar. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, uh, we've got more Tim. We do. And I, I think, Oh, goodness. I just can't wait to wrap this up. It's number 12. Young people like me may be relatively new to the scene, but we've grown up in the shadow of gun violence in a way that no other generation has. Lie, 1990s. Yeah. We've injected new energy and momentum to the fight for, for gun safety, and we believe in another way to safety. Excuse me. And we believe in, an, yeah, in another way to safety. Weird sentence. That's why young people talk about gun safety. We're not just talking about background checks and concealed carry permits, Tim. Even though those are important, we're demanding that gun violence be stopped at its roots, a systemic change. We are calling to abandon the world that allows for gun violence to happen in the first place and embracing a world where people are cared for. Holy Comrade. crap, be more socialistic in your propaganda. Yeah. We are changing the system because a world that allows injustice must be unraveled and ripped out from the root and reinstilled with something that allows for equality. Wow. These revolutionaries are going to need weapons. Anyway, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I, uh, Dude, that is that is straight out of Red Russia communist propaganda right there. That is exactly where that's from. Yep. Yep. Just trashing capitalism without saying the word capitalism, uh, taking away your right to defend yourself, and just arming the government because, you know, these are the same people that wanted to disarm police and disarm the government until they need the government and police to impose their draconian laws and if you're in the government or the police, they're coming for you, too. Why, if they get done taking everything and they force you to kick in doors to do it and risk your own lives, then they're going to take yours away, too, uh, because you can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. Marxists don't trust yeah. anybody. They purge people that they feel are a threat to their power. 
Uh, so that's very true. Yeah. In fact, listen to this. This this is an interesting one, Tim. I think I'm so curious to hear what stick stands out to you in this little this little uh, nougat. This guy's still on a roll. Thirteen. Uh, it's no coincidence, Tim, that uh, just as America's gun violence epidemic has worsened in recent years, homelessness has hit a record high. Child poverty has doubled. Household income has fallen for the last three years, and we also have the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world. It is a fact that these social and economic inequalities, excuse me, inequities directly contribute to our gun violence epidemic and that more economic hardship leads to more gun violence. Hmm. Anyone want to tell them who's been president the last three years? I know, right? And, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the whole welfare state has kept entire families, generations of families under the government's uh -huh. thumb in, in, in highly uh, crime-ridden areas in our major cities. And this is all a direct result of Democrat Marxists. This, the, this, is, yep. this is what welfare, social welfare programs and stuff get you. It brings everybody down to a poverty level. Some people are not going to be happy at the poverty level, so they're going to go out and commit crime to, to try and increase, increase or better their lot in life through taking from somebody yep. else. Yes, it is a mm -hmm. problem. It's not capitalism that's the problem sweetheart it's nope. the marxism and the social wel welfare programs the communism that's causing the the inequalities you're talking about you do it correct and and then exactly they, but this is this is a common play <laughs> for the marxists they always want to say look what the conservatives are doing when they're the ones doing mm -hmm. it uh-huh that's exactly correct and the other thing that i love about this kind of going broad approach they will take capitalism and they will apply socialistic principles to capitalism. And then when it starts to not work the way that capitalism will automatically work, they go, see, the system's broken. It's kind of like they changed the recipe for a cake and then they bake the cake anyway. And they said, oh, my God, this cake tastes terrible. You can't bake cakes anymore. <laughs> and it's just like that. Stop screwing with the cake batter. Yeah. For the love. They're idiots. Because, you know. Well, no, but Tim, no, th th listen to this wrap up, though. OK, because while you say idiocy, I know I hear you, I hear you, but give it a chance because, you know, that they're going to land this plane so well in this conclusion. They ain't done Let's yet. Let's dive in. OK, no, this is number 14. That's why when young people say we want gun safety, we also mean universal health care and mental health services, economic opportunity, an end to the carceral system, and an investment in community programs, funding for our schools and children, and a safety support network that doesn't let people fall through the cracks. When we invest in these social programs, we're investing in our people and in our communities, making them more prosperous and safer. Wow. Yeah, you know, uh -oh. communism. Because I mean, yeah, communism I mean, makes everybody safer. That. I mean, I, I'm, I can go out on the internet and find all sorts of pictures of all these safe communists standing in front of a ditch before their uh, their 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 lives are ended abruptly mm -hmm. by the government. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it, but you know, communism saves lives, folks. It it truly does. It you does. know, just disarm yourself, submit to the state, let us make everybody equally poor, and you'll be much happier. Trust us. The bread lines, they're actually exactly. fun. You get to interact with your neighbors. It's a social experiment, and, and it's, it's a the social network event. Yeah, it, it, it's just it's, it's just a good time for all, right? I mean, it's nothing incredible. brings people closer together than extreme po poverty and hunger. Y y you come together and you work together exactly. as a community. Nailed it. And so, yes, it's it's for the it's for the greater good, Tim. folks. Yeah. Anyway, it's for the greater good is for the children, and it's for the economic safety and prosperity of all. And, nice mid word. Yep. And we need your guns for the safety so, of the government that's trying to make course. everybody equal. Okay. Just saying. Of course. Yes. You got to do that. That's important. Yep. And in wrapping this up, in a moment of seriousness, because obviously we delivered this in pretty sarcastic <laughs> yeah, style. A bit. Um, yeah. The significance of this is hard to overstate. Because what just happened, guys, the gun controlling groups, one of the major five gun controlling groups in the United States, just took a hard turn from one of the leaders and tied gun violence prevention or gun safety, the gun control movement to Marxism and redistribution of wealth and radical leftism. They just took these two topics and combined them together. That is a really big deal. It is. Because they've never done it before. And you know what, Braden? It is incumbent upon all of us that are parents, good hardworking American capitalists to educate our children. And so I have a public service announcement, if, if you don't mind. Oh, what is it? There's a great what book I, I recommend for, for parents to give to their children, to read to their children. Doc, if you could put this book up, it's called Don't Break for Communists. 
And it's, it's a, it's, it's a great way to bring your child up to speed about the dangers of communism and how to best deal with them. Thank you for watching second legacy. And we'll talk to you guys soon.